Hey folks, uh, welcome. We're going to get started. Uh, good morning from the East Coast, New York City. Good afternoon, good evening. If you're in different time zones, uh, welcome. Looks like it's cold in most places. Um, so uh, grab a cup of coffee, hot chocolate, tea, your favorite drink, uh, and cuddle up with a screen. We've got a very interesting and fantastic presentation um, this this morning here. Um, and um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to take too long. I'm going to take one or two minutes to quickly introduce uh, who we are. If you're new to, to this uh, group, uh, we're at Blockchain NYC and Blockchain101.com. Um, and here we have today with us um, uh, Zoni, who is the head of research um, at Footprint Analytics, who uh, is going to talk about um, a quick introduction to DeFi um, and then a kind of a, a deep dive into, into curve finance, uh, all the interesting stuff that's happening in, in the DeFi world. Um, as you already know, Curve Finance uh, hit uh, a total back, well, a total locked value of 20 billion and kind of went back a little bit, but um, I got to that point. Uh, and Zoni, who um, is both a DeFi investor, analyst, and educator, uh, and has a uh, master's degree in applied finance, is doing a lot of interesting work with Footprint, footprint Analytics, uh, and, and uh, she's here to share some of uh uh, what she's learning and 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 teaching others uh, about uh, in terms of curve finance, and we'll be looking at the footprint uh, analytics platform that helps us analyze curve finance um, in, in the process. So, uh, quick things: I, I'm going to drop some links here as soon as I'm done, and hand over the controls to uh, to Zoni. Um, if you're not part of the Blockchain NYC Slack, this is the link to do it. This is the invite link. I will drop that link into the chat. Um, it's an active chat group, a Slack group with a lots of people talking about all kinds of things. There's no shilling allowed. You can't sell anything. It's very, very educational oriented, looking for a job. Or if you want to, if you're hiring, this is a great place to, to post stuff. Uh, but by and large, people are sharing ideas, concepts, white papers, things like that. Um, it's vendor neutral, uh, blockchain agnostic. Uh, it's a great place to learn. And I get this question quite often. Will there be a recording of this? Of this, um, we are recording this, and we will post this uh, on blockchain101.com. If you go to the course recordings section here, um, you can go in and log in. It's free. All the videos from our past sessions, uh, uh, you'll find them up there as well. Usually, it just takes it two days, three days for us to kind of get the video up there to process it uh, and do all the post editing. Okay, so uh, without further further ado, I'm going to hand over. The controls to Zoni. Zoni, hi. Hi, Jamil. Good hi. morning. Thank you. Thank you. It's a nice song. It brings us a really good mood. Yeah, yeah. my this is my backup DJ skills if things don't go well <laughs> in the blockchain world yeah. for me. So um yeah, okay. I can always go to DJing. But uh, anyhow, um I'm gonna release the, the, the share and um it's all yours. Thanks. Okay, we'll try to share the screen. Okay. So can anybody see us now? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, cool. Um, thanks for the invitation. Yeah. And hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to you all. And great to be here. Hope to have hope you all have a nice week. Uh, this is Zongni from Flipping Analytics. Uh, today I'm going to share my understanding of Curve Finance, which currently is the top DEX across all networks. Um, my sharing will be into, divided into two parts. Uh, before my diving into Curve, I will present a brief introduction to DeFi. This part is a big fundamental, while it will help us to better understand why Curve is doing a good job in some aspects. From knowing DeFi, three major, DeFi, it's major sectors, and most importantly, how to evaluate a DeFi protocol. Let's begin. Um, so uh, what's DeFi? DeFi has been an ongoing hot topic in the blockchain space since 2019. And the latest total value lock or TVL of DeFi reached 267 billion US dollar. And while it was only 24 billion one year ago, 10 times of growth in just one year. Currently, most um, more than 1,000 DeFi protocols were deployed on more than 90 uh, public chains. 
So what's defined? Defined uh, it's short for decentralized decentralized finance, also known as open finance, and it serves as an integral section of the wide crypto world, providing many of the mainstream financial services similar to the traditional finance in a way that's controlled by the masses rather than a centralized entity. If I reach a decentralization through the blockchains where users can uh, enjoy financial services at a lower cost and higher efficiency, all kinds of services of, of open finance can be found in the traditional finance. Let's take a look at the DeFi category. We have Uniswap and Curve play as the similar function of exchanges such, such as NASDAQ, where investors can trade their stocks in the platform. Compound and Awe as the lending or borrowing platform where the investor can serve in the commercial banks. EO aggregators such as YEARN plays the similar role as the fund running a portfolio for investor in a much easier way. Of course, there are other components of DeFi uh, different from the traditional finance, um, such as custody. Uh, in DeFi uh, or traditional finance, accounts are owned by the institutions, while in DeFi, no custody. Assets are held in the wallets controlled by the investor on their own. For uh, another one is Oracles. That's the platform to provide data uh, fits on and off chain. And now that's the last, but one of the most important component in DeFi. It is short for decentralized autonomous organization. It's more like a mechanism to govern and improve a community of a protocol through tokens with total with voting rights. Yep. Uh, let's take a look at the history of DeFi. Uh, while Bitcoin has laid the foundation of peer-to-peer -peer payment services since its launch in 2009, Ethereum launched in 2015, maximized the potential of blockchain in finance and encouraged the launch of new startups and products to perform an ecosystem for decentralized finance. The MakerDAO protocol go live is a turning point for financial applications in the blockchain space. It allows users to do more with their money than just transfer money between two addresses. MakerDAO is an Ethereum based protocol that allows users to use digital assets as collateral to obtain DAI. Uh, it provides the first piece of Lego for building a new open permissionless DeFi ecosystem. Since then, other smart contracts have come online, creating an increasingly dynamic and interconnected ecosystem. Compound, released in 2018, provides a marketplace for borrowers to over collateralize their loans, while lenders receive revenue for the interest paid by the borrowers. Its liquidity mining innovation also sparked the DeFi exploration in 2020 also known as the summer of DeFi. Launched in November 2018, Uniswap, a decentralized exchange on Ether, Ethereum, provides a convenient trading mechanism that allows users to exchange various tokens on Ethereum. Since then, a wide variety of DeFi applications have emerged from the most basic lending to more complex synthetic assets, payment, insurance, et cetera. A rich involving decentralized financing ecosystem has been developed. So what are the three major DeFi sectors? The first, the DEX, take Uniswap as the example. Uh, Uniswap is built on the Ethereum as the decentralized exchange and supports all cryptocurrencies on its network. Unlike the traditional order book exchanges, it used an AMM, automatic market maker algorithm to allow users to exchange their various ERC20 tokens with higher efficiency. Uh, in Uniswap AMM model, a liquidity provider is required to create a pool of liquidity for traders to swap the required tokens. There are two participants, the trader and the liquidity provider. There are two scenarios included. 
for the traders, they swap. Suppose one ether is equal to 4,015 as coded in Uniswap. Um, a, a, the trader Alex wants to swap his DAI for ether. He needs to pay his amount of DAI plus trading fee to get one ether. And for LPs, the liquidity provider, uh, Andy is the LP here, and he needs to provide a pair of two tokens, uh, which is DAI and Ether to the liquidity pool with equal value. In return, he will receive a part portion of the trading fees from the trading activities. Also, he will receive a LP token, which is the credential for providing L the liquidity and represent his share of the overall liquidity pool. So comes the question, how does it realize automatic pricing? This brings us the constant product market maker model behind Uniswap AM mechanism. This formula for this model is uh, X multiple by Y equals the K, the K is the constant one, and X and Y represent the liquidity of each asset in this pool. It's worth noting that uh, the model is not very linear. In fact, the larger the relative amount of the order, the larger the magnitude of the imbalance between the X and Y. That is, the price of large order increases dramatically compared to a small order, leading to an increasing sliding spread. So we, when we're talking about the liquidity providing, we come always come across the impermanent loss. So in the process of providing liquidity, LP needs to be aware of the impermanent losses. Why these losses will happen? Assuming Andy holds 2000 DAI and one ether, he has two options. Option one, he can be a LP, provide a liquidity. Uh, he can provide 2000 DAI and one ether to perform a token pair to the liquidity pool. When, uh, when the price changes outside the Uniswap, uh, for example, 4,000 DAI, the, arbit the arbitrators will buy Ether at Uniswap cheaper and sell it to, to, um, to other exchanges because the price is higher. This will result a decrease in the number of Ether in the pool and then decrease of the, um, sorry, in, um, this will in result in a decrease in the number of ether in the pool and an increase in the price of ether until the price will equals to the 4,000 die and the arbitrage opportunity disappear that by then. So uh, at this point, uh, Andy's LP token is now worth the 2,028 die plus 0.71 ether, which can be calculated by some formula and which is equivalent to holding 5,657 DAI. The other option of ETH of ND is just hold, just to hold um, the 2,000 DAI and one ether, which equivalent 4,000 DAI. And then when the price go down, go up to 4,000 DAI, uh, and these assets are equivalent to holding 6,000 DAI. So, under the same conditions, option one, providing liquidity is 343 die less than option two, just hold, just holds, or the 5.72% drawdown. This loss is so-called impermanent loss uh, because it's not forever. And when the ether recovers 2000 die, this impermanent loss will disappear. So comes to next question, is it any good doing as the LP, any advantages? Yes, of course, because the LP or Andy can earn some trading fees because this is the only way to reduce the income loss. And also Andy or the LPs can receive the LP tokens and the LP token is the token with values. And this token can be collateralized and to borrow another assets in some platform such as Awe. So here is the, the first category of DeFi, the DEX. Here comes the second, the landing platforms. I choose Compound as the example 
Yeah. In DeFi, lending platform and investor provides a crypto asset in the pool to earn interest. In, in this deposit is collateralized. The, invest, the investor is able to borrow another crypto asset. Currently, DeFi's lending platform typically use over collateralization, which means where the borrowers provides assets worth more than the actual loan in the case of default. Let's take an example. Alex is the investor. Um, he with the die that he doesn't want to sell. So he puts it in the pool as a lender to lend it to people in need, then earning the interest. And Bob, as a good, uh, he, he knows a good investment opportunity in DAI, but he doesn't want to sell the ether he has. So he uses ether as the collateral to borrow DAI and pays the interest. So in this case, interest of almost all DeFi lending platforms now is floating, depends on the utilization of the assets. So let's see the graph. If the if the utilization rate goes above 80% in this DAI pool, the interest rate will increase the dramatically. The, the, it's really easy to understand because the rare, the more expensive. In the process, um, both Alex and Bob participate in the compound economic activities because one is the supplier, the other is the borrowers. Yeah. Um, they both, um, in this process, both uh, they, um, they, they participate in the uh, compound economic activities but by providing liquidity and can be both rewarded with comp as the compound tokens for compound. Uh, just as the BTC miners, right? They provide computing powers to bookkeeping and reward it with BTC. And Ether, Ether miners provide resources to run the smart contracts and reward it with Ether. So investor here, they get rewarded with the platform tokens by providing the liquidity. That is what we call liquidity mining. However, the in investor might face the following problems. Too many platforms with different interest rates and how to choose the best one. And also the interest rates are always changing. So are the prices. If as for the borrowers, maybe accidentally liquidated, what to do? And as for the lenders, he might need to keep change the protocols for better interest rate in causing high gas fees. And investor doesn't can't keep an eye on the market for 24 hours a day. So here comes the defined yield aggregator, the third major category of DeFi. Um, he can somehow solve these problems now the wealth of a specific asset provides a complex investment strategy that combines lending, staking, and trading to maximize profits. And here, I choose the YEARN as the example. YEARN is a protocol on Ethereum with the major purpose to generating the highest return for the token deposit. It features programmatic asset management to deploy the best strategy. Let's take it why earns Ether Wild as an example. Again, Alex is the investor. He deposited Ether into why earn. Precisely is the why earns Ether Wild. What will the Wild will do? This Wild will deposit this Ether into a MakerDAO as the collateral to borrow stablecoin DAI. And then the borrow DAI is deposited into the Curve Finance liquidity pool receiving LP tokens in return and trading fees in the form of a basic APYs. The LP token can be staked into the curve gouge to earn CRE with rewards. The earned CRE is converted into Ether and will be deposited to the Ether well again. Such a cycle continues until, until the investor withdraws. As for uh, Alex, Alex will eventually e receive either settled interest rate and pays a certain amount of management fees. This is how EO aggregator works so to solve the problems as above.
Okay, let's come to next. Um, how to evaluate a, a, a define? Uh, we're all talking about you must do your own research before investing. Here comes the six steps I recommended um, to ask the basic questions. Uh, the particle you want to invest is which sector or which type on which blockchain is now has it been audited yet? And when did this particle go live? Ranking, what's the current ranking of its TVL? And the 24 hours users was the amount, is it popular now? And whether uh, if the protocol has launched its token, whether this token is uh, on Coin Gecko, uh, Coin Market Cap, such trustful platform. Um, another another aspect is whether this protocol is fundraising uh, with some famous investor. Uh, the third one, you can do some research to know some information from the official website, the public articles and GitHub to know the information such as the business model, the competitors of this protocol and differentiate features such as compound, what's the difference between, between compound and our way? And have you read any negative news about this protocol? Pay attention to those two good reports because the media may be you know, you have to consider the naturality of the media and you have to pay the attention to the economic model of this token. Uh, the token distribution for the team uh, is not too high, too good. Uh, within 50% to 20% is acceptable. And you have to, you can see the code submit frequency of the GitHub of this protocol to see whether this, um, this program is told to improve a lot or not. Um, also, there are some attention should be paid attention should be paid to, such as if the price trend surge in such a long a short time, because it may range a high probability of pumping by the protocol itself. And this will result in the risk of dumping by some big well, causing a large drop of the uh, token price even to zero. Another attention should be paid to uh, some pools with extremely high APY because this is one way to attract investors by some scammers. And, but if you really want to try, try caution, cautiously, but run fast before it collapses and pay attention to, to some strange uh, the, the, the data. And pay attention to activity of the community of the protocol. Uh, you can uh, take a look at the question of the users either whether they are the quality whether the quality of the investor is high or low and pay attention to the attitude and investiveness of the admin response is it is it good response or high um high efficient so far for for the first part and jamil do you want to add anything else Um, no, I think I think there's a lot of information to digest, but yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah, just uh, just continue. By the way, just a quick question on the slide. Uh, can you go back a few slides where the the um, the die? You said the the ETH die was now four thousand or six thousand. Um, was that was was that supposed to be eight thousand? If the can you just go back to that slide? Okay, wait a second. Just to make sure that the calculation there is correct. I don't want anybody to get confused. Yeah, just a few slides back, and then you can about the Uniswap, right? Yeah, Uniswap. Mm -hmm. Here. Yeah. Or uh, uh, so uh, uh, the ETH die ETH is four thousand die. So then, isn't that portfolio eight thousand die? Uh, for example, it has two thousand died and. No, no, because uh, at the beginning, uh, Andy holds like one ether and two thousand die, right? Yeah, that's four thousand. And then, oh. and then, yeah, four thousand. And then yeah. the ether goes up to four thousand, and still two thousand die. So four thousand plus two thousand. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, six thousand. Okay, okay. I thought you were talking about the total yeah, portfolio yeah. value. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any question? Because uh, you know the AMM is a bit complicated, and uh, here I related to some calculation. But my my suggestion is don't go too deep into this calculation. Yeah, you just need to know there must be yeah. some impermanent loss. 
Yeah. So we do. Um, so on blockchain 101, I did a DeFi 101 a few months ago, oh, cool. where we do a very slower uh, um, analysis of this uh, constant product formula. Like we take it, we take about an hour to get through it, mm -hmm. cover all the different pieces and aspects. So if anybody wants to like dig into this formula, to like, I need to understand how this is working. Um, just go to blockchain101.com, log in. There's a DeFi 101, uh, and spend about an hour and a half covering how Uniswap AMMs or how AMM and the concert product works um, in a lot more depth. So hopefully this is just kind of quick review um, mm -hmm. so that we can kind of jump into, into the curve stuff. So yeah, Zoni, all yours. Okay. So if there's no more questions, I will go to the next part. Maybe the first part is a little bit fast, but I, but I think um, the fundamental, maybe you can find more information from blockchain 101. Yeah, I will put more in emphasis on the second part. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I will go through the curve into four parts. Yeah. Um. Sorry, uh, I have to skip to that one. Yeah. Uh. First, I give some intro about curve, and then I will dip into the APY mechanism, mechanism, and DAO ecosystem of DAI. Of the uh, of curve, which makes it uh, explain why it's doing a really good job, yeah. And we have some insight or you know the findings of the curve. Okay, um, the introduction of curve, yeah, is a project launched on January two thousand twenty, and the funder of um, yeah, and the funder is a Michael uh, Igorov, a scientist from Russia, yeah. Uh, who funded the new new cyber a cryptocurrency venture that builds the private privacy perfect infrastructure infrastructure and protocols in 2016 and such as the project CTO. Igorov is also the funder of Longcoin, a decentralized banking and lending network. Thanks to the technical management of several of several crypto projects. Igorov expertise makes Curve more advanced. And Curve is a decentralized um, exchange focused on providing efficient stablecoin exchange services. And Curve, and the Curve team start working on Curve in December 2019, and the product went live on one month later. The real push to make Curve known to the public was the launch of Curve's native token, CRV in August 2020. Although uh, back to the, you know, in 2020, Uniswap is the, the, the biggest DEX or, uh, at that time, but since May 2020, Curve TVL surpassed Uniswap and become the largest decentralized exchange. Now Curve uh, becomes the ranking the number one in DEX sector, occupying almost 40% of overall of the DEX category total TVL market share. And we can pay attention, uh, Curve is close to pulling away from the number two sushi shop uh, with almost 17 billion US dollars. Curve is gradually completing its development of applications on multiple public chains with the rise of layer two solutions and other new chains. And Ethereum still about dominate about 80% of the curves TVL. And now it accumulate to 22 billion US dollar across seven chains. So what's the highlight or the advantages of curve, the competitive advantage? Here's my summary. Um, curve uh, provides the low slippage focus on stable coin. Uh, Curve introduced a upgraded version of the formula called stable swap. It based on the Uniswap AMM constant product formula, what I mentioned just now. And um, Uniswap AMM is a DEX innovation that brought DeFi into a new era. However, the, the algorithm can cause considerable slippage if a pool's liquidity is not deep enough. But for the stable coins with little uh, price volatility, most of the time around 0.9 to $1.1, 1 
the curve stable swap is curve. Uh, it tends to be x plus y equals constant. So in this price range, al allowing both currencies to flow slightly in a range around one. Uh, is only i think we uh, we're losing you a little bit your connection is um coming in kind of choppy Now? Um, yeah, you're you're back now. So we, we oh, lost okay. you. For, yeah, we I'm lost you. Like, yeah, you're back now. Yep. Okay, so uh, where do you lost me about the curve? About the one or two? Um, or you you just you just example? mentioned you just mentioned uh, you're talking about the uh, the graph mm -hmm. on the right. Um, so you were still on the yeah, first yeah. first okay. bullet point. Yeah, first bullet point. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, and the curve stable. St uh, swap between the x uh, multiple y and x and this because um sorry because the uh, the price range of stable coin is limited between 0 0.9 to 1.1 dollar yeah, yeah. Um, so, so anyway, one, one quick one quick question uh, and people are yeah. DMing me this question um before you go too far is why yeah. would why would you want to st swap stable coins when theoretically they're stable uh, and equal to a dollar. We know that that's not always the case, but why would you want to swap? Like typically, when you swap, you're doing a, you're doing a speculative play, right? That this asset I'm holding, I'm going to swap for another asset that will I think will appreciate uh, faster, right? Um, so why would there be a need for a, a swap for stable coins? What's the economic motivation for that? I guess I'm, uh, for my point of view, um, because there are some other different investment opportunity for different kind of stable coins. Yeah. And, and maybe one, some pools support only support USDT or some pool only supported DAI. So when you only have one kind of uh, stable coin, you have the, you still has the need to, to trans to swap into another coins. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but um, can't you just buy the stable coin with a stable coin? Uh, that's the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can use Dai to buy USDC, right? Yes. Um, yes. And so yes, why you can do that? Yeah. So why? Uh, well, how's that different? Uh, like, I can go to an exchange. Uh, I can go to an exchange. So what is this? Is this? Um, what What do I get here? Because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I have to sustain these fees. Um, so what is like the the value proposition behind a stable coin swap. So you said one is a utility. I need I, I need USDC to get involved in a project, but I only have Dai. Uh, yeah. So I, I go I go I, I go to Curve to, to to swap. But what what why else would I? Why else is there the need for why you know the stable coin swap? Like why is it so popular? What's driving it? Um, sometimes I guess curve is not only as the, uh, for the traders, not only just the individual trader go directly to the curve platform, but some other protocol use this platform as an infrastructure. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether you under, uh, I will show you, uh, actually I showed the Y curve, uh, the, the Y earn, yeah. And curve just as a one, one part of the investment strategy for for you know for pe for the the portfolio they choose when they swap when they have the die you know from from the maker DAO and then they can uh in invest it in 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 the in the curve and curve this product as say in infrastructure uh, am i understood in some way i mean trading uh you not only the individual traders will use the curve but mostly maybe the proper or the protocols. 
Yep, I got it. Yep. I just want to make sure everybody yeah. understands why there's a need for a stable coin swap because this people are DMing like, what do I need a stable yeah. coin swap server? So that's because, a fundamental. Yeah. yeah, because some protocol maybe uh they doing some you know the LP whatever they are in the great net of uh, you know swapping different uh, stable coins and curve just uh, play as a the 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 first Lego for them to use this mechanism yeah fantastic thank you so you were up to, you okay. finished the first bullet point and you were talking about the second bullet point okay okay so yeah let's come to the second point uh because of this uh low slippage this this is not only keeps the slippage low enough but also increase the competitive trading fees the trading fees of curve now is only one tenth of units unit swaps but only 0.04 percent yeah and the third one is uh, curve now supports seven changes a uh, public change and over 100 pools uh as i mentioned uh, uh, above my connection is not good it has this application deployed on seven networks and most uh, Ethereum is Cur Curve's primary network with over 80 ports for uh, investors uh, to choose from. Uh, the recent public networks such as Polygon, Phantom, and Edge Arbitrum offer on average 10 ports. Some of the newer as well as uh, less developed networks provide a smaller number of ports. Yeah. And the fourth one is the attractive AVY mechanism. Uh, investor can get more than three forms of APY from Curve. And yes, um, nowadays this multi-APY mechanism that encourages investor to deposit more funds has been widely used in already other platforms. But this is the first uh, appear, appeared in Curve. That's why I chose Curve as the example to explain this mechanism. And the last one, and the last one is the virtual circle of Curve's DAO. Curve's project uh, governments or DAO, they use Curve, uh, the CRV, uh, the rewarded tokens, and the VCRV to positively stimulate and connect investors, particle parties, and the Curve itself. I will explain the, the, this button two um, features of Curve. So any, any question from this part? No, I will go on. Okay. So let's have a um, overview of the APY mechanism. We can see from the curve um, dashboard and currently there are more than three forms of APY from curve, but they have different kinds of meanings. I will give you ex ex explanations. Uh, they provide base VAPY, which stands for variable calculated based on today's trading activity in the trading pool and rewarded TAPY. T stands for token and is determined by CRV's token price and reward rates. And boost TAPY is investor can increase the reward rate by buying and staking more CRVs. And the last one is the extra APY or uh, for some pools, platforms tokens will be offered as an additional reward, such as here, uh, the Alchemix, as they are actual rewards in, in the, our USD. No. Okay. And so uh, the next question is how the investor get the multiple APYs? Yeah, take just uh, three pool example, as an example. Uh, in the process of converting a stable coin in the three pool, the trader place a, um, pays a transaction fees of 0.04%, of which 50% goes to curve. The remaining 50% will be given to the investor as the VAPY based reward mentioned above, or more precisely, uh, the liquidity provider of this three pool. And for the investor, once he deposit one of the coins, die a USDC or USD or USDT in this three pool, uh, the curve will perform an automatically conversion. 
is changing the deposit stablecoin into a combination of the three portion of the league. And this also is explain what was the swap, um, the, is any uh, need for, for the swapping the, the stablecoin? Yes, for in this case, uh, for the LB, um, the EBIT token, he doesn't need to do the, the, the uh, providing all the co coins at one time because uh, Curve will do this for, it, for him automatically. And okay, come back. Uh, in return, the investor will receive three pool CRV as an LP token, meaning that the holder of this token will receive V APY as the base reward for investing in this pool. And secondly, the Curve's APY mechanism encourages investors to activate the three pool CRV in their wallets in the, in the way that they can deposit this LP token into the three points, three pools gouge. And, and uh, the holder of this coin will receive, and this investor will be rewarded with the CRV in accordance with the allocated share of the pool. If the investor wants to boost his rewarded rate, he can withdraw the rewarded CRV and deposit back to, into the CRV gouge. This taking action allows the investor to receive not only an increased factor up to 2.5%, but also Curve's governance token VECRV. And VECRV uh, has the voting right, is the governance token of Curve. And the exact number of VECRV redeemed depends on the length of the stake. The longer the CRV stake, the more VCRV can be converted. So here's the rules. Um, if you stake for one year, four CRV equals to one VCRV. And if you stake for four years and one to one conversion rate. So here comes the question. Who will have the strongest demand for the VCRV, right? So I will explain this later. And just now is the interact inside the curve. And I will explain another example about the interaction via particle beyond curve. When an, when an um, investor deposit his die into the wild of Y earned, he will receive a Y die representing the same value as the interest bearing token. This Y die is acceptance asset for the Y pool in curve. So this investor deposit this white die into the white pool and he will receive the white curve, white CRV as the LP token. At this point, um, this investor has two options now. He can deposit this white CRV back to the curve gouge as in the previous example to earn CRV, or he can also deposit in the pool of balancer. Balancer is also a DEX supporting customized pool structure at a ratio of 2% YFI, uh, the, the token of Y earn, plus 95% Y curve. And if the, if the, the investor has the YFI, he can do this option. And in return, the investor will receive BPT, which is the LP token, indicating he deposit his deposit position and additional bonus of BAL, the balancer's platform tokens. Moreover, by taking the BBT to, yeah, by taking the BBT into the Y earns wallet, the investor will again get the y, YFI in return. So until now, perhaps, uh, you have understood how these tokens are used as incentive between different protocols inside curve or outside curve. And I will explain the breakdown of curve style model in this section to, fig to dig further into how the interaction between curve participants to meet their respect needs through the incentives. So the question, who needs all these VECRV tokens? Um, again, VCRV is the Curve's governance token with voting rights. It's primary, 
a primary used to vote on CRP, which is short for Curve Improvement Proposals, or submit new CIPs to the Curve doubt. And remember the previous example, the Y pool in the above uh, is the official pool created by the YM protocol. For protocol parties that need to create a new pool in Curve, a minimum of 2.5 uh, 2.5 thousand VECRV are required. Currently, the VECRV can only be converted or purchased. Uh, uh, sorry, VECRV can be only converted in the CRV gouge uh, based on the staking period. According to conversion rules, in order to submit a new pool proposal, a uh, protocol party have to purchase at least 2.5 thousand CRVs block for four years or 10,000 CRV to lock for one year. Is it enough? No, there's more. If, if the CRP passed, the protocol parties will need more VCRV to bring the pool online. And of course, in order to, for the CRP to pass the protocol, we need more VCRV to vote, right? And furthermore, if to, in order to make the pool more attractive, a higher CRV APY, and the protocol party need to have a high enough percentage CRV stake to determine the CRV allocation rate for the following week. What does that mean? Um, according to the latest data released by Curve officials, uh, the gouge of the CRV uh, pro uh, provides a um, weekly allocation of these CRV tokens, yeah. And the latest data shows the main pool, the Tri Crypto 2 and the Frax are the top three with the highest percentage of staked CRVs in a CRV gouge. Due to the limited total amount of CRV issued each week, the CRV rewarding rate as the APY are essentially allocated to this corresponding pools according to the stake percentage in ranking. So the answer is revealed and the particle parties are the largest demanders of the VECRVs. And yeah, from both perspective of the investor and particle parties, it's not hard to find the curved down has created a virtuous circle that fulfilled the needs of the key players in the op in the project, the investor, the protocol parties, and the curve itself. Let me explain. For the investor, um, the APY mechanism will encourage him to deposit more assets and stick and stick more CRV instead of selling for more CRV rewards. And pools with high reward rates are really attractive to them. For the protocols, it needs a higher voting power to provide an appealing rewards rate, which leads to a higher demand of buying CRV in the open market. For the curve itself, two things are more important, the amount of total value lock on its platform and the increasing price of the CRV. These two goals can be met by introducing more pools, appealing rewards and better control of the CRV price, which less to sell and more to buy. So according, what's more, according to the Curve official data, the average lockup time for CRV is over 3.6 years. This number provides a lot of confidence for investor to go ahead and invest a deposit or pledge for, for the particle parties to open new pools on this platform for attraction. So Curve's disclosure of this number is also an implicit incentive. Sony, so, um, so we, had, we just, yeah. just go back. We, I just wanted to take some questions before yeah. um, we move further. So we got a couple of questions. Uh, mm -hmm. one, one question, I'm just gonna go through um, that we have uh, here. So Curve's TVL, $23 billion. Does that mean liquidity transactions on the platform in a, in a given year? Is that number represents a specific year? Um, or does that statement re represent something else? 
You mean the 20 billion um, dollars? Yeah, yeah, 23 billion. So um, let me respond to that question. So the 23 billion dollars is like a balance sheet. It's a moment in time, yeah. right? It's not a, it's not like an income statement, which is a, 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 tra a transaction of value. It's total value, value locked, kind of like how many, how much deposits a bank has, savings accounts and checking accounts. So any specific, at any given moment, that balance, that total balance that a bank has in terms of deposit moves up and, up and down, depending on people's deposits and withdrawals um, and curves TVL, the, the, the TVL itself is, is um, like uh, the total deposits, right? So curves TVL's total deposits peaked out at 23 billion, right? Um, yeah. 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 So, um, and, but the transaction value, uh, the, the amount of transactions have occurred and their values is, is much higher than that, right? Um, do we have any data mm -hmm. on that? Um, it's only on like the curved uh, total transaction value. Yes, but I, I can check later. Sure, because we can get we that also later. Have this data. Yeah. yeah, we could post that yeah, information right. slide, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, yeah you're right. This uh, total value lock, just like the banking balance for each bank, how many, how much money is deposit, but not only the TV, the token of curve, but different, you know, USDT, USDC, and the token stake on these platforms. Yeah, we have a couple of questions on APY. Let me just, I'm going to bundle those questions. Uh, but there's one more mm -hmm. question. First question I want to ask is, uh, 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 is curves is Curve is its own blockchain or an ERC-20 token on Ethereum? Sorry, I, I don't get it. So, the, mean the, so the question I is, um, is Curve its own blockchain or yeah. an ERC-20 token on Ethereum? Um, yes, first of all, it's a DEX. And uh, at the beginning, it only uh, go live on Ethereum. You can see this chart, actually. Uh, yeah, before May, you're only on Ethereum and supporting Ethereum ERC-20 tokens on Ethereum, right? But later then, it applied, uh, deployed it, this application on other blockchains, such as Polygon, Phantom, etc. What does that mean? When you go to Curve, the, the official website, you can change the network yeah, to Polygon, to Phantom, but the token only on that network. You have to change that. Am I clear? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Curve is software. It's a it's a DApp. Specifically, its yes. functionality is functioning as an exchange, and it sits on multiple chains. It initially started yes. with Ethereum, and used ERC twenty tokens, but then went beyond mm -hmm. that and onto platforms that don't even have ERC twenty tokens, right? Um, and so it's expanded. So it's multi chain. Yes. Uh, okay. So now we have some questions on APY. There's a few yeah. of them. Uh, there's a mm -hmm. com comment from Brian in the chat. Uh, and there's a, there's a question from Sol. I'm going to just kind of combine these two get together. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, from Sol, still confused on how to read the APY on the screen that shows all of the trading oh. pairs pools. And then Brian's comment, uh, most APY shown on most platforms um, uh, actually calculate into USDT and the APY not always true due to each platform has their own formulas. And that's why it's needed to standardize for true APY calculation, calculating for this moment. So, um, and then uh, some fire starter is saying, how do you, how do projects have such high, high pay or high APY? Um, and they're ref referring to Olympus DAO, which is not within the scope of this. So let's talk about APY. Zoni, like w why is this high? Uh, how is it calculated? Um, are there differences in how it's calculated in other decks? Um, and um, how to read all of this? Can you kind of break down this base rewards uh, your APY here? Yeah, um, I guess uh, it's a different type of API we mentioned here. I will slow down a little bit, sorry. Yeah, can you, can you, uh, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're going a little bit fast, but you can like, expand the screen a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And okay, right here. Um, for for curve, I, I just mentioned curve. Later, I will go back to, to some, you know, really high APY later and go back uh, to, to the curve first. What does the base V APY in curve? Actually, remember this graph? Um, we, have, um, we have the LP right here. Sorry, this one. Yeah. 
um, the first APY is called VAPY. Is the investor to get uh, to get the reward by the trading in the form of trading fees, which comes from the traders. Can I understand? Could I understand this part? You know, when traders come to to these swap coins and they have to pay the trading fees, right? 0.04%. And half of these trading fees, it will go to the investor, depends on uh, how oh, the, his uh, position, his LP token, his LP. Is it the first APY? It's, it's just uh, calculated based on the trading activities or trading volumes. So this is the first part. And the second part, yeah, the second part here, the rewarded APY. T is just for the token of the, the curve uh, token, the CRV. And actually I, I have to, to summarize all things like um, the CR, uh, is depends on the economic, uh, the curve economic, uh, because it uh, in its white paper, it explained uh, the weekly distribution of this CRV is uh, how much and and every week the pools has to to um to get their distribution sorry here this chart this one yeah and every week uh the pools has to get their different kind of APY rewards percentage depending on how much CRV they have been invested or stated in the gouge. Am I understood here? Yeah, so the higher CRV, the higher uh, CRV uh, staked for the pool, the higher the, the CRV distribution APY can give, give given to the investor in this pool. So this is the, the, uh, the um, yeah, so I think so. So, of, yeah. so, so, one zone, like, so there's a little bit of a leap here that you're making in terms of the, the gauge weight mm -hmm. here. I think you need to explain yeah. what the, the gauge weight is. Um, so we mm -hmm. have, we do have a question that's like, what, what is the, what is the gauge weight, uh, and how does it relate to curve? Like, how do you connect the two? What, what, oh, is, okay. what does that word even mean, uh, in this context? All right. Uh, the gauge is a, is the, you can regard it as a the wallet, yeah. The wallet only you know to, for for uh, staking the CRV, and for the pools, um, and for the pools of CRV. And how did this prove to decide the the, the weekly uh, CRV uh, APY? It depends on how much CRV they have been staked in this wallet or vault. Am I understood? Just... Yeah, I, th I think that's a, a, but you know, I think um, we want to kind of explain some of these concepts a little bit more slowly because it's getting more complex. Um, okay. So I think that's a, that's a, that's a good response. Roman, does, you, does that answer your question? Oh, let me, let me make more easier with yeah, some yeah. simple uh, example. Uh, for example, this week uh, I'm a curve. I'm the platform, and I decide to you know to distrib dis distribute distribute uh, one thousand CRV tokens. But how much will be uh, will be distributed to different so many proof as I as I mentioned one hundred proofs on Ethereum. I distributed this one thousand tokens one week, uh, depending on this proof. Uh, the 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 number of how much they stake in the CRVs, right? For example, uh, the mean if like 20 20 percent, it means it 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 um it it stake it like 20, 20, 20, uh, 220 CRVs in this gouge. So now it has the greatest proportion staking the CRV. So for the next week, I will decide it to to uh, distribute to the, the highest a CRV APY to this pool because the limitation of the, the weekly distribution of CRV. So we have to, um, the, the curve has to make this rule by depending on how much the CRV stake on, on this uh, CRV couch.
Is it clear? Yeah, I think it's it's something that we need to probably spend more time time on to understand. Yeah, yeah. Um, like one slide's not going to be sufficient to kind of break this down. Um, mm -hmm. So so um, so let's we'll come back to this as maybe a, a, you know at a later time. Um, let's let's continue. Um, um, uh, you know, with the with the rest of your presentation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm, maybe I would give some more information about yeah. the gouge and yeah, the voting yeah. in some documents. Maybe it makes it better to understand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, actually, the above is the the all introduction and understanding from my point of view of uh, curve finance, uh, we have come to some conclusions or summary. Yeah, uh, Curve is no doubt a good project with its advantages because it focuses on the stable coin sector, on the stable coins, uh, high demand of, of some you know, particle who in need to swapping the stable coins and brings those attractive low leverage and fees more swap transaction brings high base VAPY. And good design of DAO that fulfills purpose of all participants, including the DAO curve itself. And more than three years of CRV lock, strong, very strong confidence for investor to stake and protocol to create pools. And can the interaction between the tools in curve and protocol outside the curve making a variety of different APY forms. But still, much more needs to be improved, especially from user experience. We can see um, we can is uh, the third, the interview style and the same, sorry, okay. Uh, the bad experience and how to understand how to earn APY for beginners and who might easily make mistake by clicking the long button. Yeah, and showing too much stacks without good organization. And you, it's really hard for new new investor to find the key information. Uh, we also find the popular pools with the following features. Uh, popular pools are such as pools, with high value, uh, the more trading activity is the higher base VAPY, and the pool supported by some solid platforms such as Compound, Awe, etc., and pools with higher voting rights from the gal stats, uh, which means they have more uh, CRV in staked in the CRV wallet. And the pools with actual rewards such as all USDT from the Alchemix. Um, the last, uh, I will, will, will give you some reminders to the new investors and pay attention to this new pools label as factory here. And because this, this uh, pools, which is permissionless um, pools and anyone can deploy without any voting. Yeah, it skips the initial real reveal of the financial strength of the protocol party and the level of support by the CRV holders. And sticking LPs to the gouge is a must to get CRV rewards, uh, which must, most new investor will miss. And also keeping in mind what network is chosen. As, my, as I mentioned, uh, Ethereum is the most, most of the pools is the point on Ethereum, but there are fewer, much or much fewer pools supported in other new networks. Yeah. And so it's my complete sharing of today's presentation. Yeah. And maybe comes to the question time. Yeah, so let me let me ask some questions, uh, Zoni, and your 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 audio is getting choppy again. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, first question I have is, um, uh, let's say somebody wants to get started with, with Curve um, today, and they're yeah. a com complete beginner. Um, what what suggestions do you, do you have for them? You know, like how can they get started um, um, now? You know, like should they should they go and deposit? 
a hundred dollars um or should they you know like what should they do um you know for curve or for new defined investors yeah i mean let's say they have a little bit of a DeFi experience you know um but oh, they, want, okay. they want to get started with uh, with, with, mm. with you know they, they've got to get some stable coins into the, into their metamask right so that's step one mm -hmm. they could mm -hmm. figure out how to do that right but um yeah the, the uh let's say they want to now um play with curve like what's what's some scenarios that you could you could suggest to them or if you mm -hmm. have a screen where you could show how to do some of these what some of these things um what's your what's your suggestions um, first of all, if you want to experience the DeFi on Ethereum, hundred dollar is not far far from enough because the gas fee is so high. Yeah. So if you want to experience a DeFi protocol, you can try on some cheaper network such as the Binance, a uh, BSC smart chain, or the Polygon, because um, the gas the gas on this network is much cheaper. The first thing so don't try any you know uh because uh even you 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 can purchase the ether you can uh, we have some ether as the gas fee but uh because some because curve is not providing so high apy so for the return it's not it can either can even not cover your gas fees am i understood yeah choose some network to experience yeah so i mean so the recommendation and is if, if you, you're going you to, want to you know really yeah. yeah if you're going to play with this yeah. start start with a, a chain like polygon where the gas fees are very very mm -hmm. low uh so that's step yeah. one and then step what, what else do you recommend on that um you can choose some uh curve also have the polygon network um i'm not sure what can, i can Sure here. Yeah, I have to connect my. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you just make it a bit larger the the uh, zoom size? Ah, uh, sorry, my screen is so large. Yeah. Um, not sure. Maybe it's not really good to show my. We know you're rich. It's okay. No, no, I didn't put too much in some wallet here to present. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah, actually, uh, curve is uh, so many pools um, on Ethereum, but it's so so high gas fee. Yeah. But you can try yeah. Polygon, yeah, when you switch to this network. But of course, not so many tools right here. Uh, like I have to ch change this, change to Polygon, yeah. So you can, you know, can you hit. Um, can you hit hit the sell button? Hit the sell button there, and we can just see the fees. Yeah, just hit the sell button there. Yeah. Um, and then when it, your MetaMask comes down, uh, it should uh, ask you to sign the transaction, right? You have to pull uh, the MetaMask. I don't have any die. I don't have any oh, die no, here. Put, uh, put, uh, yeah. pull, can you pull the MetaMask down? Just take a look at it. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. just click on the MetaMask. Uh, yeah. Is it asking you to sign the transaction? No. Okay. No, I don't have any okay. for now. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't prepare for this. Yeah, you know, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. But sorry. this, it's a good idea to switch the network to play with. So, yeah, like, I mean, anything that costs maybe ten, fifteen dollars on Ethereum might cost a dollar, maybe not even a yeah. dollar on Polygon. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but so, so, might... so, let's say that. So, let's say I bring in a hundred die into the Curve. Uh, walk me through some steps where I can make some money off of that hundred dollars on Curve. Right, forget about gas fees. Let's let's assume gas okay. fees are zero, zero for now. Um, what are the, what are the things I should do? I should do step one, this. Step two, this. Step three, this. And boom, I'm earning something. Yeah. Uh, let me change back to Ethereum. It's better to explain. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. 
forget about the guest B. Yeah. So you can, can you, play. Uh, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you zoom in? Like, uh, uh, just go, see, see the, the ellipse? The, yeah, yeah there you go. Per yeah, perfect. Yeah, better, much better. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay. you know, I've got $100. Forget about the gas fees. Uh, how, do mm. I, how do I start earning? Yeah, you can, for example, uh, it is running so <laughs> slow. I don't know why. Yeah, uh, this is one of the disadvantage of uh, Curve. It's not really good to know where to start. Yeah, let me, let me uh, begin. Yeah, when you come to the Curve Finance, the, the main page, the home page, yeah. Now here comes the, the data. Okay, let, let me, uh, ex um, we, we try to try crypto, this one, the pool. When you click in, pay attention, this is just the, the swap page, play as the trader, not the LP, yeah? Because uh, as you mentioned, you want to use $100 to earn some interest. Yeah, your, your demand is not only to swap, die into another USDT, whatever. So here you should click the deposit button here. Yeah, this is the right way to, to deposit your hundred dollars. Yeah. And when you click hundred here, and it will read how much uh, rebalance on your wallet. And you can choose uh, if you have hundred, sorry, I don't have here now, but yeah, you can just put whatever you want here and then click the deposit. And just I show in this um, slide, sorry, this one. Well, when you do as the uh, investor, when you deposit the 100 die, and you will get the, the CRV LP token and you will in instantly get 50% the trading fees, which is here, uh, it's so bad the experience. You can get the base VAPI. But here is so low this one because it's a stable coin investment is not high. But when you mouse over, you can see more details, the daily, weekly. Um, but you can get the T. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't come out right now. Uh, yeah. But later when everybody can go to the curve to see the data here. Yeah, you can see if uh, the first thing you can get is the base APY from the trading activity of this pool as a LP provider. But if you stake your, um, the LP token into the gouge, you can get the token here and with this APY, but this is show now, sorry. No. So, so am I understood now? You can... Hello? Jamil, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, um, th those are a couple of steps that we, somebody could do. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. So, I think, and mm -hmm. we, we're running out of time. I think uh, maybe some more information on, on the these gouges or gauges, however you pronounce it, uh, would be really interesting. I think we want to yeah. kind of understand some of that. Um, and maybe if you okay. could share later, like a couple of steps on how to like take a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, and uh, maybe on Polygon uh, with the most liquid pool. I know there's not a lot of liquidity there to like stake something and, and, and use Curve. And so people can get kind of more comfortable with it. And obviously um, maybe you should drop your LinkedIn um, in the chat. If anybody has any questions, they can reach out to you. Um, and I'm just gonna go over a couple more questions here. Um, so question from Jaina, uh, will the deck? Yes, so just to reiterate, this video um, and the slide deck will be available in blockchain101.com. We put up the video and we put it right next to it, the downloadable uh, uh, slide deck in, P in PDF format. So you'll be able to watch and download the slide deck. We'll also post the slide deck in Slack. Um, so if you're on Slack, you can get it pretty pretty quickly. Uh, but the upload to blockchain101.com is a couple of days because um, I have somebody that does the production work on that. Um, Another question from Firestarter, Curve is the leading AMM for stable coin swaps. Who holds and stakes most Curve tokens? Has more governance rights. Hence, every project today is looking to buy, hold, and stake Curve tokens. Hence, the Curve wars have begun. We are part of it. Okay, so uh, I don't know who Firestarter is. Uh, so they're asking like, do you, I mean, do you, you might not know, but who's holding a lot of these tokens and therefore has influence? in the curve market. 
Um, actually, uh, you can see from the Curve Finance, the official website here. Now is the, uh, actually I, I know another website, it's not official, but show some data, uh, the, the CRV stakeholders. And um, because it is a little bit advanced knowledge, um, a curve, you can see the, um, the buy and stake and get the reward and stat again, it's really complicated. You know the 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 way to 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 get the APY from Curve. So there's a another platform called Com Convenance, Convex. Sorry, Convex Finance is doing like a, a fund to investing the CRV. So Convex now is the biggest CRV stakers holders of the CRV. Uh, it, a little bit more information, but to let you know. Yeah. So Zoni, in terms of footprint analytics, um, yeah. can you log in and show us what data we can see there? Like what's on the platform that we can see in regards to any of the DEXs, but specifically Curve, but what else can we see there um, that is going to give us a better advantage in deciding where we want to invest? Yeah, this one is what I mentioned just now. What's it's, that link? Uh, it, what's the link of that? Convex what? Oh, Convex yeah, Finance. Convex Finance. Yes, okay, great. Um, this one is like a fund investing the curve. Yeah, to, to simplify, you know, the, you stay, you get the reward and put it again. So you just yeah. simplify it. Yeah. And so what I mentioned, this is the, the highest, the CRV holder for now. Mm -hmm. And the second question you mentioned, what, what we can get the dashboard other than curve from our website. Uh huh. When you come to our website, you can see we have features dashboards and for the DeFi pro projects, we have different kind of, uh, not only DeFi. Yeah, we, uh, this is the curve dashboard I show you just now, uh, the current latest TVL. We have another uh, more like Aave, BadgerDAO, different kind of DeFi projects. Yeah, because this is a live dashboard, it's easy for you to read the data, the latest one. Yeah. Yeah. So on, also, the, the, the curve yeah. dashboard, can you just pull up the curve dashboard? Um, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. That's really interesting. So, um, what am I looking at here? Like, what is this data telling me? And what can I learn from this um, to become a better trader or investor with Curve? Like, what are the things here that I should look at before I go invest or while I'm investing? So you have some macro data, right? Some large, like total TVL, uh, which yeah. is uh, important because that's going to be some of an indicator of the amount of liquidity going to be available. That's important. But mm -hmm. what else What else information do you have here? Uh, actually, you can see the activity on Curve. Is it the traders, the, the number of traders? Is it the daily volume goes up and down? We can see here, maybe the highest is between the November or October last year. But these days it is a little bit downtrend. You can see from the trend. Uh, also about the curve tokens, you can see the price. Actually, two years ago, it's only 2.5 something. And later in at this end, uh, at the uh, half year of 2021, it goes up to the fine dollars. You can pay attention to the token price of curve. Yeah, you can see the token volume of curve here. Yeah, what's more is the capital ranking to see the current situation of curve. Yeah. We actually, dip, uh, we have more liquidity for each proof stacks, but I, we, uh, but I didn't do it for now. Yeah, but I can do that using our data. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Great. Excellent. Um, if we have any more questions, just drop some of your questions. Um, somebody did ask me a question regarding something that I was working on. I have some near tokens and um, I was, uh, I, I lend, I, I lend them out uh, on a centralized exchange. Um, and the, uh, the API was the, my point was the API was fluctuating quite a bit. Yesterday, the API was over mm -hmm. 50, over 50%. 50 it was almost 60%. Um, and then um, today it's, I'm looking at the screen right now. It's, between 20 to 30% APY, it kind of fluctuates pretty wildly. And the reason it's so high um, is because uh, when there's a bull run on a token, people wanna borrow 
the token at a high APY, mm -hmm. capture that bull run, and then uh, and then sell out and then exit on 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 the on, on the borrow right on the loan that they made. Uh, so it's it's all kind of like um, this kind of arbitrage and speculative thing that's occurring. Um, I do some lending um, on other I, like I don't want to promote anything, uh, but on other uh, I do it on multiple platforms, including DEXs, but also uh, centralized exchanges. Um, and uh, like for example, I lend on KuCoin. KuCoin, there is no lend. There's very little lending risk, right? Uh, because KuCoin will step in um, if the, the counterparty doesn't deliver. Um, on and so I lend there, and I get high APYs. I can show you my screen on that. Uh, let me just get this yeah, for yeah. a second. Yeah, let me just so that everybody's kind of aware uh, okay. here. So uh, and so you can compare what's happening with centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. I think it's a good thing to take a look at. So you you see here. Um, this is my screen and I'm lending, yeah. I'm lending, uh, <clears throat> I'm lending right now, uh, over 3000 near tokens. That's about 60,000, $70,000. But, uh, this is, um, you can see the yield here. So this is the yield here, right? Mm -hmm. And, and this, this, you can see that it goes all the way up to like 73%. So this is liquidity that's available, right? And, uh, I'm, I'm making liquidity available. This is. The, the loans that I've got out, right? This is, you know, six, somebody borrowed six in there, then somebody else borrowed 96, and somebody else borrowed one, right? Uh, um, and um, so you can, this, but this is purely centralized. Um, mm -hmm. And there's no apparent fees to me. I'm sure KuCoin is taking, they're skimming somewhere um, in the yields, but I don't see it. Right, uh, and there's no gas fees and things like that, and it's pretty quick. So that's just a quick kind of comparison of some of the lending. But this obviously this is not stable coins, right? Uh, mm -hmm. This is um, yeah. This near is just coin. yeah the near token, but this is just general lending that you could do on centralized exchanges. So yeah, you can also do on Binance. They also provide the liquidity. Mm -hmm. Uh, mining, yeah. but you know most yeah. people go to decentralized finance because you are visible, invisible on Dex, right? Yeah, because yeah. On, I'm almost. Yeah, I'm, I'm, invis yeah. I'm invisible on KuCoin. Um, there's no KYC, so <laughs> you're invisible there as well. So, but there's pros and cons to both. So oh, no with, KYC now. Oh, with KuCoin, I, there's no okay. KYC. I mean, you can do it. You can do KYC, but it's not required. So you can okay. um, you can open an uh, account with with an email address. So, okay. um, but the but, second thing is, yeah, sorry. The second thing is the centralized uh, DEX is the wallet is held by by the KuCoin, but the centralized is still yeah. You know? yeah. yeah yeah yeah. But, so, but that's uh, the, my, my, the second. Yeah. I think my point is you have to do your homework. There's a lot of different options. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, the decentralized world has a lot of benefits, uh, uh, but there's some benefits in the centralized currently. Um, but we'll see what, mm -hmm. how, what the world is uh, heading. So uh, we'll take one last question, and then we I think um, we'll have your closing remarks, um, and then we'll give people their their Saturday back. Uh, question from Michael: Does Footprint Network allow us to to uh, access Block Explorer info? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, so there, yeah, you, you, um, you broke up there. So does, uh, the question is, does Footprint Network allow us access to Block Explorer info? Yeah, yeah, um, maybe. Um, we, we now we, we try to, you know, provide different data. And Ethereum is the first network we have. And second, we have the Binance, a BSC. And if we go to our uh, website, uh, let me show the, the screen, it's much better, yeah. Uh, but actually it's not exactly, you know, the, the, the every detail of the, the block ex explorer is more like we do some, for example, we, we have some theme because for everyone can build is their own dashboard. For example, I want to know the ether burned. So the data from the e e Ethereum uh, Explorer, we make it like we want to see the top 10 project accumulate uh, Ether burned. Yeah, this is the dashboard we want to watch. And which one is the rank of uh, the top 10 rank by Ether burned? Yeah, we, we actually make it in different kind of uh, different kind of subject. And actually, if you want to build your own uh, dashboard, you can uh, we can using the Ethereum uh, data here. 
this is all from the Ethereum Explorer, uh, the block the block data. Yeah. Yeah, and if anybody has any more questions on footprint, the footprint team is on our Slack. They're there. Um, so Liz, uh, I think um, you're here. You can maybe drop, a, you know, your your contact information in, in the general channel. Just say, hey, I'm from footprint. You have any questions? I'm assuming the login to footprint is free, right? We can get a free account currently. Yeah, yeah. And you can see all the dashboard, and you yeah. can view. Of course, yeah. there's some difference between the paid users and free users, but you can also yeah. you can still make your own dashboard. We need we need to get some uh, uh free premium users in. So we have to work out a deal. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, but um, okay. Um, I think that's it for today. Um, this is fantastic, uh, fantastic presentation. Clearly, there's a lot to learn. Hopefully, this will get you somewhat yeah. more familiar. Um, we'll try to drop some information about uh, gauges uh, on the Slack group, um, the slide deck in the video. The slides, hopefully, we can just drop on Slack, and then both will be available on blockchain101.com in a couple of days. If you want to go back to the video, kind of review things uh, and all of that, that will all be uh, available there. Um, uh, anyhow, I hope everybody has a great uh, rest of their weekend. Um, Zoni, thank you for a fantastic presentation. This is really great. Um, there's a lot to learn. I do recommend you take $200, uh, connect to poly <laughs> Polygon, and play yes. with, with, that's the best way to learn. You'll see some of the terms and words that Zoni used right there on your screen that kind of like helps connect neurons in your brain. Like, oh, wow, this connects to, oh yeah, that makes sense. Um, so highly recommend do, to do that. Um, don't pay for a thousand dollar course, spend $200 and play with Curve, um, and maybe you'll make a little money. Okay, um, I wish everyone a happy uh, weekend. Uh, the, our next session is gonna be with the Bank of France. I have the Bank of France coming in. I think that's Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern to talk about their cross-border CBDC work. Um, it should be a very, very interesting topic. Um, and then we have a couple more sessions coming up. We have a Decentraland Masterclass. This is a five-part series. Um, it's the uh, official Decentraland mentor. Uh, from the Decentraland organization coming in to give a five-part series. The first session is non-technical, explains a lot about Decentraland and the metaverse, and the, the, the other four se uh, sessions uh, tell you how to build dApps uh, for, for Decentraland. Decentraland. That's going to be somewhat technical, and I really look forward to that. Otherwise, go to blockchain101.com to see the, all our upcoming courses. 99.9% .9 of them are free, uh, and we are going to be delivering classes in person in New York City very, very soon, as soon as we get past this little Omicron uh, hiccup, I think we'll be past it probably by March, April. We're going to be going back to in-person classes. And we, of course, we'll continue virtual stuff as well. Um, thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jamil. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.